where they have to do net credit settlements, uh, probably in gold, in preference to the U.S. dollar. I think what will happen is that in bilateral trade, in, in particular, they will look for other mediums of exchange uh, to cover the net margin in their trade. My own suspicion, looking back over several, several hundred years of world history, is that the chief beneficiary of this will not be a sovereign fiat currency, but rather gold. Uh, that might go to my own personal preferences, but I know in my past when I have talked to very large sovereign wealth funds or very large supranational um, pension funds, that there is a preference over every other fiat currency with the exception of the U.S. dollar for gold. And I suspect that the beneficiary of the trend you talk about in Davos will likely be gold. I think that you will see uh, uh, net margin transfers between countries like Russia and China in their own domestic currencies uh, and between the Saudis and China as an example in their own domestic currencies. But I would suspect that the medium of settlement after the U.S. dollar will likely be precious metals. I think that the uh, incredible pace of purchases by central banks of precious metals is a function of two things. One, if you own a trillion dollars worth of U.S. treasuries and the U.S. treasury is paying you four, in a currency where your purchasing power is declining by six or seven or eight, the U.S. government is basically absolutely positively guaranteeing you a three, three and a half percent loss compounded over 10 years, which is not a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. But the other reason for the disintermediation of the currency is I think that a lot of central banks around the world foresee a period of time where they have to do net credit settlements, uh, probably in gold, in preference to the U.S. dollar. Well, you know, does that lead into, you know, the Shanghai gold exchange that China is promoting so much and in, in that, you know, as just one example, um, Saudi Arabia could take their China Chinese currency, the yuan, and immediately convert it into gold on the Shanghai Gold Exchange. Um, if they if they don't want to hold, you know, the dollars or or the Chinese currency itself. I'm an outlier in opinion here, but mm -hmm. I think as little as the Chinese and the Russians and the Saudis trust us, they trust each other even less. And I mm -hmm. think you'll see a circumstance where the Saudis will say, we'll keep our own gold, thank you. And the Russians will say, we'll keep our own gold too. And at some period of time, monthly or quarterly, they'll settle out the net distance uh, difference in trade, ba trade balances in gold. Mm -hmm. Uh, that makes an awful lot more sense to me than China replacing the U.S. as the custodian of choice. Remember that when Germany decided to repatriate their gold from the United States, uh, the United States said yes, uh, but on the installment plan. Mm -hmm. seven, seven years, wasn't it? Something like that? <laughs> yeah. Or, uh, yeah. yeah. And, and I don't think that lesson was lost on anybody. Yeah. Uh, it certainly wasn't lost on me. And then they got back different gold bars than they actually yeah. had deposited with <laughs> well, different that's, numbers, right? That's okay. Gold is fungible. I get that. Yeah, yeah. No, but it's but, like it's like what happened yeah. to our gold bars? <laughs> yeah, but you know, I think uh, I think once the United States demonstrated to the world what a sovereign fiduciary is, <laughs> in other words, you know, oh, you don't like these terms? Have you seen our fleet? Uh, <laughs> well, right. I mean, the, the, there's also another um, article that was out recently. Well, along the lines of that China um, Saudi Arabia story uh, re regarding uh, the currency, um, Iran and Russia. This is another story last week that came out on January sixteenth that Iran and Russia are talking about a stable coin backed by gold, and, and you know, Coin Telegraph. It's one of it's one of the more, I guess, significant uh, crypto related news websites. How do you interpret this type of article? I think that the headline itself is an, in an, an unintentional lie. Mm -hmm. The stable coin that is being proposed is one that would be denominated in gold rather mm -hmm. than backed by gold. Jim, let's say that you acquired yourself a kilo of gold or, or a stable coin representing a, a kilo of gold. And you went to Putin and you attempted to surrender your stable coin for gold. <laughs> Good <laughs> luck as a creditor. 
it's important to note the difference between a security that is fiat, that is denominated in a commodity, and a, and a, and a security that is in fact backed by and redeemable for the product. Okay, so, so what you're, I, you're saying that there's no there's no rege- if there's no exchange mechanism to take possession of the gold, it's yeah. not real. Or yes, um, and there wasn't there wasn't a proposal uh, to back the stable coin unit by unit with gold. In effect, this is at best a fractional reserve gold system. But as far as I can tell, there's no no redemption feature, which means that the phrase backed by gold should be replaced by denominated in gold. And you, as a holder, continue to run the credit risk. You become an unsecured creditor of Iran, Russia, and China. Gotcha. Not my idea of a good time. Because you can't but, redeem it. Right. Well, I mean, I mean, even the even during the gold standard days, the only at the gold window at the treasury, regular people could not go and redeem gold. It was only countries that could actually redeem gold, correct? Correct. So maybe this would be their their idea would be something along Iran and Russia could settle up their stable coins, I don't right. know, once a month or once a quarter with a shipment of gold to balance things out. But um mm. I that's know. my that's what that's my suspicion of what's going to happen. Uh, there may be uh, a blockchain uh, enabled uh, smart contract, you know, a system of credits and debits on the ledger that they agree to settle per- periodically in gold, which is to say the net difference. You know, it's important to note that if bilateral trade between two countries is twenty billion dollars. You don't need to send twenty billion dollars back and forth. You need to settle. You need to settle out the net. Mm. And I think that the blockchain might be a very useful mechanism to keep that ledger by contract. But I don't think that that uh, impacts the rest of us very much, except that my suspicion is that the you, one of the most important units of exchange going forward for bilateral trade to avoid the weaponization of the U.S. dollar would in fact be gold. 